Hey, this is Nikki with Nana's Quilt Cottage. Well, I'm excited to be back on here with another fun free project that we're gonna do a little sew along tonight. So tonight we're doing the Gathered Clutch tutorial from Noodlehead. So Noodlehead has a lot of amazing patterns out there. We carry numerous ones in our store. Um, so you can stop into Nana's anytime and grab one of those fun patterns and see samples of many of them sewn up in the store. But tonight I want to do a fun little pouch and so I used her tutorial as inspiration. So we posted online on our website, nanasquiltcottage.com, the information what you need for the class tonight. And I also posted a teaser yesterday to remind you to go ahead and get your stuff ready to go for class tonight. All right? So underneath this posting, in the comments, there will be a link for you to go and grab the tutorial and watch it, read it, you know, learn all the information from it. Also, um, we're posting the com in the comment section everything you need to prep. So maybe you don't have time to go look on the website, you just wanna get started. We're gonna post the information right underneath here in the comments of everything you're gonna need for this class tonight, okay? So I'm gonna switch screens real quick here to another screen so I can see the video live while it's happening and tell my comments work. I have a thing behind me that plays the comments, but it doesn't always keep up with us uh, at the very beginning, so I have to use another device just for about the first 10 minutes. 20 minutes max. So I see that my mom has already posted those links underneath there, so make sure you use those if you wanna see the information and go and read it. Now, she has a full pattern on her website you can buy for $6 that has um, added parts to it, some more pockets you can add, and actually the sizes on the one that's in the official pattern are larger. So if you want a bag that's a little bigger once we get done tonight, be sure to go back to her page, noodlehead.com, and buy the full pattern if you choose to. It's a lot, a lot of fun. I'm excited to sew this with you tonight, and I look forward to seeing what every one of you guys do. I'm gonna pull my comments back up. I lost them for a second. Okay, there they are. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over what we need. Okay, so here's what we need. Hold on a second, the volume just messed up. Let me just kill that, okay. So, all right, so what we need, I have my stack right here of all the treasures we need. I'm gonna turn the camera just a smidge so you can see what we need a little better. And when we get ready to sew, for those of you who haven't sewn with us before, we move the camera in and it only focuses right here on the sewing area. So you won't have to look at me the whole video. You're gonna be really focused in on what we're sewing, okay? So what we need for tonight for our class is, all right, so main thing we need is our exterior fabrics, okay? So for my exterior fabric tonight, I am using the new Bookish fabric from Art Gallery. I have it upside down, no I don't. Bookish fabric from Art Gallery. So this is the main fabric for my bag. So I need two pieces there, and the measurements are listed below, they were online. One is five and a half by nine, and the other one, I'm sorry, five and a half by nine, and then five and a half by 13, okay? So I also need the fabric for the front band. Let me grab that here. I don't have an order, shame on me. So this one here is four by nine for this piece right here. Oh, I got all my girls on. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. All right, next one I need is lining. So for my lining, I'm using this fun plaid from the bookish line. So this one right here, the lining piece is five and a half by nine. I'm going fast, but they're in the comments. So you can see these in the comments, um, what you need to have cut. Okay, zipper in covers. All right, she's telling you to have a one and a half by two and a half. I'm gonna show you a little bit different way to do zippers. If you've done zippers with me before, this will be like old hat. So I'm gonna do it a little different than the tutorial that's online. Um, I'm gonna do it our way of doing zippers. So you'll see, we're gonna bind the zippers. So we really only need one piece, one and a half by two and a half, to do both of them. We'll make that work. Okay, next thing we need after we get the zipper in covers is our fusible interfacing. So we've got two pieces, this SF101 right here, five and a half by nine. Now it's not listed in the paper there, but it does mention it as an optional. You do want two pieces of fusible fleece as well. Hey April, good to see you tonight. So five and a half by nine of fusible fleece. So I got everybody on. I don't have to use the iPad anymore because my comment section's working. Woohoo! So two pieces of useful fleece, two pieces of interfacing, 
both of them five and a half by nine. All right, next thing we need is, make sure we have, is a zipper. Okay, she calls for a seven inch, you can use that, but I really like to use one of our larger ones at store, a 14 inch, and cut it down. Because I'm gonna show you how to do a really nice zipper with a little bit larger one, okay? So there's the zipper. Okay, the other things are the optional pockets inside. So one is a divider pocket that needs to be eight by nine, and you'll need a piece of interfacing that's four by nine. Okay, we'll talk about that more later. Then you've got your credit card pocket, and or it says card holders. So that piece is seven by nine, and a piece of interfacing that's three and a half by nine. So those are our pieces. I got Naomi on, April, Eileen, Joyce. Oh my goodness, we got lots of fun gals and guys on tonight. Okay, so those are the pieces we need for our bag. So gather up your pieces. I'm gonna put all mine. Actually, I'm gonna keep them over here. So they'll kind of be out of the screen. But then I'm gonna go ahead and bring the camera in and we're gonna just jump in and start sewing. We um, like to do at least one of these a month. Last month was the fabric folder basket. That has been super popular. We've demoed that at shows and in the store. It's been a great fun. That video was posted at the top of our Facebook page. It's pinned up there. But after tonight, this video will be pinned at the top so you can find it amongst all our what's in the box videos that we post uh, multiple times a week. So let's pull it in and let's get started. Other things that you're going to need tonight, I'm gonna go over those with you. Let me get my camera in place right here. Yes, Jennifer, it's so good to see you today. So it's fun to have you in the store to say hi. It's excited to see you. All right, glad everybody's here. Hey, Angela, good to see you on here too. All right, so a couple things we're gonna be using tonight. Uh, feet we're going to be using, I'm gonna be using my quarter inch foot, my zipper foot, as well as my standard everyday A foot, just my regular foot. So these are the three feet we're going to be using tonight on our machine, all right? So those three feet, I'm gonna start the night with my quarter inch foot. I also have coordinating thread in my machine that matches my fabrics. I'm also gonna need some wonder clips, some scissors. I'm gonna be using my flatter tonight quite a bit. So those are some of the extra notions I'll be using tonight. Also, if you don't have one, Go grab a gift card or a credit card and get it handy. You're going to need it a little later. I'm going to be using a Chick-fil-A gift card tonight because I wouldn't want to air my credit card on, on Facebook. So I'm just going to use a Chick-fil-A card tonight for my marking for the card slot. So you'll need to grab a card. We'll need it a little later. All right. So I've printed out the tutorial, um, just the parts I needed. I kind of edited it a little bit to make it fit because if I, it first said 110 pages because of all the comments and I went, well, that's not a good idea. So I, I pasted it into Word, edited it down, made it small. I've also purchased the full pattern, but that one you'll need to purchase if you wanna make it. So again, this is the Gathered Clutch Tutorial uh, by Noodlehead is what I'm using for the inspiration tonight for our piece. So what we're gonna start with first is we're gonna start by making the band that's gonna go on the front of our bag. So we have a piece of fabric. Let me tell you the size of this piece and my sizes right here. Um, this front band is four by nine. So that's the piece of fabric we're gonna start with tonight. So grab this one here and you're gonna fold it together pretty to pretty. So this is the four by nine piece. That's the band on the front. Fold it together pretty to pretty. And we're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam. I like to use a 2.0 stitch length on my machine. When I'm sewing, I'm gonna move my needle over so I get to that quarter inch spot that I like. So I'm gonna sew this here. Now bags are a little more forgiving than quilts. We don't have to be like super duper accurate, but we need to do a really good job. But we don't have to worry that every piece is gonna fit like a glove. Okay, so I just pinned the bottom and I've got it pretty to pretty. I'm gonna sew on the long side. So this fold, when we fold something long ways like this, is called a hot dog fold. So I did a hot dog fold. If I'd folded it the short way, it'd be a hamburger fold. Okay, so this is our hot dog fold. All right, so we're going to go ahead and sew with a quarter inch seam here on our piece. I'm going to go ahead, get my presser foot in the right spot, and I'm going to sew down all the way. So hopefully you caught the what's in the box this afternoon that we posted. Some fun fabrics from Andover, Wyndham, and Blank Studios. Three great boxes there of fabric. Okay, I'm going to back, back stitch. Okay, so I've got that band. Uh, done first. 
I don't like to have all these little extra threads, so I'm really pretty big about trimming those off each time. So after I get that done, I'm gonna turn this right side out. This is a pretty big tube to turn, um, so it shouldn't be too hard. I'm just gonna run it down my thumb, and I'm gonna turn this right side out, right here, all the way down, okay? All right, so turn that right side out, and then I'm going to go over the iron and I'm going to center this seam right here on the back of my project and give it a nice press. Okay, so go over here and give it a nice press on the iron. I'm just kind of going to push this around a little bit. All right. <clears throat> And I'm just pressing, I got that seam just running down the back. Now it doesn't have to be exactly in the center, okay? Hey Diane, good to have you on. So it doesn't have to be exactly in the center, just right down the back of it, okay? So I've got that piece, that's for the band on the front, okay? Now that we have that made, we're just gonna set that off to the side and we'll come back to that a little later, okay? Now it's time to get that main center piece of our bag. This is the one that's five and a half by 13. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to do the gathering stitch. This is what kind of makes this clutch. The special thing about it is it's a gathered clutch. So we're going to make the gathers. So we're going to play a little bit um, with our machine. We're going to change some settings to do that gathering. So I'm going to take my piece of fabric, and the first thing I'm going to do is going to fold it in half, pretty to pretty, in a hot dog fold. This is the 5 and a half by 13 inch piece. Okay? So I'm going to fold it in half and just give it a little crease. I'm gonna use my iron to help me. I don't want a harsh crease, just a little soft crease in here. All right, so a little soft crease here in my fabric, okay? Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew a half inch on each side of this crease with a basting stitch because what I'm, my goal here is to make the, the threads in here really loose so I can gather this fabric up and make it shrink down to nine inches. So I'm gonna eat up four inches in gathers. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna switch my foot over to my regular sewing foot, not my quarter inch foot. So just my regular foot here, switch it over, okay? And then I'm gonna take on my machine, and I'm gonna show you this here on my machine so you can see it, okay? So right here, I'm in my regular straight stitch. I'm gonna put my machine first back to default. So right now my needle is in the center, but I'm gonna take my stitch length and I'm gonna go all the way up, okay? As far as it will go, mine will go to five. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way to 5.0 on my stitch length, okay? What this is gonna do is make a really big stitch and that's what we need, okay? So I've got up to my largest spot. Now I wanna do a half inch seam. So I know the edge of this foot is 3 eighths. So I know I'm just gonna move over just a little bit from it and I'm, I have my washi tape on here that helps too, to know, but. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over, I'm just gonna eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exactly half an inch, okay? Over, just eyeball it. So you can see I've got that crease down the center of my fabric. Let's pull you back in with me. All right, tip us down just a little bit, okay? So you can see I have that crease in the center of my fabric, okay? So what I'm gonna do is sew over a little bit. But one important thing also is I need some good tails here to be able to grab a hold of. So I have two thread tails. I'm gonna pull them a little extra long to start and I'm gonna hold my finger on them when we start sewing so they don't pull in because I need them long like that to grab a hold of. So again, I'm over just a little ways from my center crease. I'm gonna put my finger on my fabric, my thread tails, and I'm gonna start stitching. You see how huge that stitch is? So I'm just taking that really big stitch all the way off the end, just going down, trying to stay about the equal distance away from that center crease on here. And this is how we're gonna do the gathers. All right? When I get to the end, I'm no back tacking, okay? I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna pull it out a little long, longer than I would normally ever do it. And I'm gonna kind of cut it in the center here so leave myself some long tails and leave long tails on my piece. Okay, so I've got that first basting stitch. Can you see that running through right through the book there? Show you on the back, maybe you can see it a little better. Okay, so it's kind of a really big stitch. Now we do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now my thread in my machine is made right now to match 
I've got the cream to match the lining and the paint to match the exterior. So that's why you see two colors of thread. So right here, I'm gonna hold my tails again, start out, I'm trying to be, you know, a little distance from that center crease. Now I'm gonna go all the way down my piece and then we're gonna start doing the gathering. Now, sometimes this doesn't work for people. Mary Beth likes to use dental floss and zigzag over dental floss and then pull it up that way. That's another great way. Okay, again, pull long tails out here and then cut my pieces. All right, so now I have two nice long basting stitches on both sides right here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to base this, I mean to uh, gather this up. So I'm gonna hold on to, my to one of my tails. So I'll pick my top tail here, which is my pink thread. Okay, hold my pink thread. And I'm just gonna start softly pulling my th thing. Now, the nice thing of having two threads is if one breaks, we're okay. But also we need the two to give the right look to it. I have 40 weight thread in my machine because I use leftover long arm thread because I long arm with 40. So to get all the great colors, I just use my long arm thread. So it's a little stronger than the normal 50 weight that most people use, but still 50 will do this just fine. Okay, I gathered about halfway across. Now I'm grabbing the other side right here, grabbing hold of that one and giving it a little tug as well. Just the pink thread on top, just my top thread. That's all I'm grabbing. And I'm being gentle with it. I don't want it to break, okay? I'm just gonna move my gathers along, holding my thread the whole time. Now I could hold both threads at the same time if I wanted to. That is a fine option as well. Okay, so there's the start of it right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go the other side and pull these up. So again, grabbing the top pink thread, give it a little pull. Okay, and the same on the back one, I mean on the bottom one. Grab that pink thread, separate them up, give it a little tug. All right, so. All right, so there's our piece. I feel like it's nicely gathered. Now our goal now is to get nine inches. Okay, so we need our piece to be nine inches. So I have my ruler here, and I can go over and see where my nine inch mark is. And now I've got it all pulled up pretty tight. So now I'm gonna kind of loosen those gathers up and pull it out. My thread's out here so it's a little easier to work with. And I'm just gonna gently work it out till I get it to the nine inches where I want it. Just gently move it out to that spot, once I kind of get it where I want it, then I'm gonna play with my gathers, okay? So there, I've got my piece kind of gathered around. I'm kind of pretty happy with it right there, okay? So it's still the five and a half by nine, but here's what we're gonna do to keep these all in place. We're gonna take our piece of interfacing and we're gonna fuse this right onto here and that will just kind of hold all our gathers in place, but I want them kind of equally dispersed on here. I don't want any section that has a whole bunch, another section not having very many. You can always pull it a little more if you need to pull in the gathers a little more. Okay, but I kind of want it equally dispersed on there. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to my iron and I'm going to take my piece of interfacing, that five and a half by nine, I have two of them. Okay, so this is SF 101. This is a uh, woven interfacing. This is my favorite interfacing to use on bags. I just like the hand on it. It just adds a little body without being too much. So I'm going to use this one here. So bubbles up or sticky side up. So whatever the rough side is, that's the sticky and you're going to put that side up on your ironing surface. Then I'm going to take my fabric here. I'm going to turn my, line, my thing a little bit. I'm gonna put my fabric here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line up my one side. Now get my threads out here where they're kind of out of the way. I'm gonna line up the edge of my fabric and give it just a little press just to hold it in place. Okay, right here at the edge. Okay. Giving that a little press here. Okay, getting that set. Now I'm just gonna work across my piece gently, putting my, getting my, gathers kind of where I want them and just giving it a press down and that's going to hold it right on here. Okay. So I'm just going to go all the way across. Give it a little press as I go. I'm going to be a little anal here because you're all going to stare at my bag after I'm done. So let me just get this set where I want it. Okay. 
I'm just going to kind of work across my piece. And when I get about two thirds or maybe three quarters away from the edge, I'm going to make sure I got enough to make it to the end. And I'm moving my fabric around, making sure it makes it up to the top of my interfacing piece. That it's not so gathered that I lose the top of my interfacing or the bottom of my interfacing. Now this will fluff up a little bit after we're done. So don't stress that, oh my goodness, it looks like a pancake. It's okay. All right, so I'm just going across my piece here. All right, now I'm almost to this edge here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over about two thirds of the way across. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna press down this side on the interfacing. It's still a little loose here. I'll fix that in a minute. What I wanna do right now is get this little edge lined up perfectly and give it a little press. Okay, do not cut those threads off yet. Okay, so see, you can see it's partially put down. Now I'm just gonna kinda press the rest of this down both ways. All right, getting that all pressed down. And the nice thing about the SF-101 is if I don't like it a little bit, I can peel it up a little bit and repress it down too. You can't do that over and over and over, but a couple times you can. All right, so there it is. It looks kind of flat and it's kind of hard to see the texture here but trust me in person, it looks pretty good, okay? So we've got that on now. I'm still not cutting those threads yet. All right, I'm gonna turn my page of my instructions. So I just don't wanna miss a step. Okay, so now in the instructions, she tells you to go ahead and sew across both these sides, but I feel they're pressed down. I'm okay with how they are right now, so I'm just gonna keep on moving along. So here is my center band, the one we just made a few minutes ago when we pressed. So we're gonna put that seam side down and center it on here. And then I'm just gonna put a couple pins in it to hold it in place. Now I have my machine set with a pink thread because I wanna match this. If you want to, maybe if you're not confident in your top stitching, maybe you wanna to switch to a thread that matches this band here or use the pink like I am and just kinda of accent your work, okay? So I'm just putting some pins in here just to hold it in place while I'm getting ready to go. Okay, so there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna switch back over to my quarter inch foot and be sure you go change your stitch length back to your standard stitch length. Now for top stitching, I like to do a 2.5 and that's what we're gonna be doing. It's a top stitch here. So I like to go to a 2.5 for top stitching. So we were at five for basting, now we're gonna go 2.5. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and sew right across here, close to the edge, not falling off. All right, just to do a nice top stitch. So what this is doing is sewing the band down, it's also securing all of our nice pleats. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sew across, all the way across, taking my time and do a nice straight stitch because my thread is showing because I chose to keep the pink on. So I wanna make sure I take my time and do a nice straight stitch on here. So it's gonna go all the way across with my thread. Stop right here, my foot got caught in one of my gathers. Okay, when I get to the end, I'm gonna back tack just a smidge when I get to the end. Doesn't hurt to back tack a little bit. Okay, and I'm not even gonna cut it up. I'm just gonna turn it around and head back the other way. But you can see the stitch line. Now I use a variegated thread, so that's why it looks like it goes darker and lighter because I use variegated thread, which it matches this, this fabric right here. Okay, so take out this pin now. And I'm gonna trim up all these threads in just a second. Oh my goodness, they're gonna drive me batty. Okay, here we go. Going back the other way. Again, using a 2.5, or 2.2 is what I have stitch length on here. 2.5 would be fine as well. Some people like a big one, like a 3.0, and that's fine. It's all really a matter of personal preference. Oh my gosh, this was popping up. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going all the way across. The only thing I wish I'd done is fussy cut my fabric a little bit so you could see the books better, but the back side is clutch, you'll be able to see the books just fine. 
Okay, a little back tack. And that is done. Okay, so the front of our bag is done. So now what I'm going to do is just trim off all those crazy threads. You know this is going to drive me batty if I don't. So get rid of all those crazy threads. Right onto the back side. Okay. So got those off. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these off. Right here on both sides. Okay. So I have all those off. Throw them in the trash. Now before I set this piece aside, I want to go ahead and take one of those pieces of fusible fleece that I cut that was um, five and a half by nine. That thing looks crooked. Oh my goodness, do you see that? You probably can't see it. It's a little crooked. I can see it, but hopefully in the back side you won't see it. I got it just a smidge crooked. Either that or the uh, pleats are playing a trick on my eyes. Okay, so I'm going to take that piece of fusible fleece that has the bumpies. So bumpies up. And I'm going to lay it right here on my ironing board, bumpies up. And then I'm going to put the piece I just sewed right on top of it and go ahead and put fusible fleece on the back of that. So we're putting the fusible fleece to the back of the interfacing we just put on a few minutes ago. So again, it's just giving some more structure to our bag. It's really nice on there. So I'm just ironing this down. Now fusible fleece loves steam. So don't be afraid to use some steam. Okay, fusible fleece likes steam. So it's pressing this all the way across. Okay, it's pressing my pleats down a little bit more, but they'll puff up. Okay. Now after I iron the first time, I cram place my iron on the back side. Just know that this is polyester and you don't want to have a, a searing hot iron on this polyester. And I always iron it to the fabric first and then go back and just do a little bit on the back. Because if I put the iron on the back side first, it will actually kind of um, shrink up a little bit because it's not adhered to the fabric yet. Okay, so there's my piece. So it has multiple layers on here. It has the interfacing on the back of it, and then I sewed it, and now it has fusible fleece. I notice this one little edge right here isn't tacked down yet. Fix that a little bit. All right, so that's done now. So I'm gonna set that piece to the side, and what we're gonna do next is we're going to make our card holders. So let me switch my pages here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is the divider pocket. So the larger piece that is 8 by 9 inches wide, need that, and our piece of interfacing that is 4 by 9. Okay, so what we do with these is we're going to fold them in half, and we're only going to put interfacing on half of the piece. So I'm going to lay this on the back side there. You see I've got my piece. It's 8 inches this way and 9 inches this way. The interfacing is 4 by 9. So I'm laying it on here, bubbles down against the wrong side of my fabric. Then I'll go over to the iron and iron it. Okay, fabric up. If I put that iron directly on that interfacing, it's gonna pull and shrink up immediately. It needs to touch the fabric and adhere to the fabric first before I flip it over. Okay, so you can see I've adhered it to the fabric there. So now I can fold it in half, my piece of fabric, and give it a quick little iron. Sorry, my family's being a little noisy upstairs. Apologize for that. There is a few people that live here. They do pretty good being quiet. All right, so I folded that in half right now. So there we go. So it again, it's now measuring four by nine, okay? Before I do anything else, I'm gonna go across. Okay. All right, we're back. Oh, thanks, Pat, you're so sweet. Pat is a faithful viewer, and, and she watches um, almost all my videos and put comments on my stuff. She, she sews a little bit, but she's just the sweetest. I've known her for many years. We met in Germany when um, my husband was stationed there, and her husband was working there. All right, so I went ahead, and I've, I've sewn across that with that top stitch all the way across. Got that sewn. There's my piece right there. All right, so now that I've sewn that, <clears throat> that is the divider. So we're just gonna set that aside. We won't pick this back up until we're almost done with the back, okay? So I'm just gonna set it down right here and hope I don't forget about it. <laughs> I've noticed in the pattern, in the tutorial, she forgets to tell you back again where to put it. So I made myself notes, so hopefully I wouldn't forget where to put it. Okay, the next one we're gonna get out is our, 
our card holder. So the card holder is seven by nine, is what the card holder is. So our interfacing for that would be three and a half by nine. So I'm gonna flip this over to the wrong side again. Then I'm gonna lay this on the back side right here. Okay, I'm gonna lay that there. And I'm gonna flip it over and iron it at the iron. Right here. Let's give it a quick iron. I apologize, I can hear one of my kiddos uh, giving grandma grief upstairs. So I apologize for that. All right, so after I've ironed that, right there. I'll go ahead and fold it in half, wrong sides together, and press it, and then we'll top stitch it. This bag really goes together pretty quickly. Now it's gonna seem a little longer because I'm talking through all the steps, but if you are re-sewing this later on, you probably could sew it in at least, you know, maybe not half the time, but two thirds the amount of time. Okay, so now that I have that done, this one is the card holder. So you do want to be very careful to make sure whichever side you want facing out that you're going to see. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and get this one. I always like to start with my thread underneath my presser foot so it doesn't bump up on me or anything. Some people I know have to hold it. I'm glad I don't have to do that on my machine, but I do like to have it under the presser foot. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way down with that top stitch 2.2. I'm at the fold, okay? So the opening is down here. I'm at the fold. Okay, is where I'm sewing across. So some of you might be wondering what my crazy nails are about. So these are my football nails, because it's football season. And later this month, I'm gonna go to the Redskin Broncos game in Denver. I'm very excited about it. So I have got my Bron my Denver love, not Denver love, excuse me, my Redskin love here with my colors of my favorite team on my nails, and then my football nails. So for the game later this month. I'm super excited, the Redskins rarely come to Denver and they're coming, and I am so excited that I have tickets for the game. I've always wanted to see the Red Redskins in person, and I get to this year. So that's why I have my crazy nails. All right, so I went ahead and trimmed the, feet, the thread off of there, and that's set to go, and this is my card holder pocket. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab one of my pieces of lining, and we are going to work with the card holder. So how we're gonna start with the card holder, you turn, my instruction page over. Okay, so what we're gonna do with the card holder pocket right here is we're gonna fold it in half and just make a little crease, okay? So we can see where that crease is. Just make a little crease. I'm just doing it with my hands. I don't need to put it in with the iron. That would be kind of intense. I don't need that much of a crease. Just one big enough that I can see. Now I'm gonna line up the raw edges so the, the top stitching is in the middle of the piece, the raw edges on all three sides. I'm gonna line those up. I'm gonna put a couple pins in it to hold it in place, right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna sew down that little crease I made just to put the divider in my pocket, because this is where we're gonna put our cards, okay? So it's our card holder pocket. So I'm just gonna sew right down that center crease. Okay, so I'm gonna back tack just a smidge right there. Okay, give me just a second. Checking something right here, apologize. So, um, give me a second. Okay, all right. So back tack right there at the top. And when I get to the bottom, I'm gonna do just a, a dropper back tack, but that's gonna be sewn over a couple times, so we really don't have to worry about that part. Okay, so now I'm all the way down. You can see I did do that little back tack right there at the top to secure that. Cut my threads. Okay, so now what I'm gonna need is a friction marker or sew line pencil, but I prefer to use a friction. And the friction markers, what's nice about them is they disappear. So this is a friction marker, and what's amazing about it is when I iron it, it goes away, okay? So they're pretty amazing. So that's what I'm gonna use for this next step. So I've sewn this now, I really don't need to keep the pins in it. It's gonna hold itself enough. I don't have to do anything else to it. 
Okay, so now what I want to do with it is I want to decide how deep I want my cards to stick out. So I'm going to stick my Chick-fil-A gift card in here, and I'm going to decide how far do I want that card to stick out of the pocket. You know, I can pick my spot where I want it to stick out. Okay, once I say, you know, that's how far I want my cards to stick out of my pocket, I'm going to go ahead and I can feel where that edge is. So I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm going to butt it up against the edge. I can feel it where it's at. That tells me that's my little sweet spot, okay? So my sweet spot, I'm actually going to drop it just a smidge more. My sweet spot is one and three quarters inch from the bottom, okay? So I figured out where that is. And these are the Quilter Select rulers, so they grip the fabric so I can turn it all around. So then I can mark on it, okay? So one and three quarter inch, I'm going to use my friction marker and make a line all the way across the bottom. Okay, this is going to be my sewing line. Okay, I'm going to take my card back out of there for a moment. I'm still going to need that. Now I'm going to sew on that little line I just drew. Okay, so I'm going to sew across on here, right on that line I drew. Make sure it's popping up. Okay, so all the way across. Go ahead and sew. And then this is what's going to keep those cards from going too far down. Okay, just do a little back tack at the end. All right. So you maybe have something else you want to put in this. You're maybe thinking, well, I'm going to put such and such kind of card in it. So maybe you'd want a deeper pocket. Or you, but you don't want it so far down that you have to really dig inside there. You want it to, you're, card or whatever to stick up just a smidge so you can change that size to what works for you okay so now that I have the pocket set hey Lori welcome on yes so and this right here is our pressing mat it's called the two times around board we sell them in the store and on our website so this two times around board here is you can press on one side and then you flip it over and you can cut on the other side so these are made by a, a local single mom in town that makes these for us. Um, and we sell them, like I said, on nanosquiltcottage.com. Or you can come in the store and pick one out. Um, the ones we carry in the store have the cover on them has a Moshi dot. It's linen colored with a Moshi dot. And we sell additional covers you can purchase to go on top of here. The wood on here is treated so that it won't warp. So it, it's a really nice mat. I've been using this one for about a year and a half now solid. It's amazing. So it's called the two times around board, two X around board. All right, so back over here, I'm gonna take my gift card now and I've made my spot so it won't go down too far, but I also wanna make sure that I have a snug spot for my card. So I'm gonna do a little line of stitching on this side and on this side so my card stays snug. Now, if you were doing something else in this pocket, you may not wanna do this step. But I want my card to stay nice and snug, but not too snug, okay? I want to be able to easily get it out, and maybe I want to put three cards there or two cards there. So I don't want to go, like, super tight, but I do want to get it close. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and measure. It looks like on mine it's going to be one inch over. So this was one and three quarters was this distance from the bottom row edge to the center that I went for my choice. And then I'm going to go one inch over. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay my ruler on here at one inch, and I'm gonna press it, I mean, excuse me, I'm gonna mark it with my friction marker. Go ahead and take my card out, out of the way. So I'm gonna mark it here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it all the way down. I really don't need to sew it all the way down, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark it all the way, and I'm gonna sew it the whole way. Just keeps that piece from flopping around. So same thing on the other side, I'm gonna use that same measurement on the other side, so I'm just gonna go one inch in. Now you do the measurement, works for your cards. All right, so I've got that. Get them back away there. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew on both of these. Again, at the top where the fold is, I'm gonna back tack a little bit because I don't want it to um, pull out the stitches because that is a stress point. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch that. Back tack a little bit right there at the beginning, all the way down. Alright, got 
that done. Okay, trim that off. Cut this one here. Cut those threads. You know I'm kind of crazy about my little threads. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna sew this one now. That other line I drew. And then in a moment, I'm gonna show you the magic. When I iron that friction marker, it's just gonna disappear right off of my back. So a little back tack at the top. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, there we go. So I've done all that. So I've made all my lines. I've sewn on all my lines. Now I'm going to iron it and they're all going to disappear. All right. So here we go. I'm going to iron. And all my lines are gone. It may look like they're not because my thread is a pinky color, but it is. They're all gone. All my lines are gone. Now my spot holds my cards nice and securely at the depth I chose to have them in there. Okay? All right, so that part is done. Now it is time to do a little more prep on our exterior. So we have that other exterior that we did not do anything to because the other side was, was um, gathered. So on this side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a, our piece of interfacing on it and our piece of fusible fleece. So again, this is the back side of our gathered clutch. Okay, so I'm gonna take my interfacing, bubbles up, lay it on the ironing board, the two times around board, lay my fabric on top, lining up the edges. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and press it. Give it a good press here. All the way across. All right. After I get this pressed, and I like to do 12 seconds wiggle wiggle. Okay, so each spot is about 12 seconds wiggle wiggle. Making sure I get those edges. That's real key. Okay, and when I flip it over, I can kind of tell if it's not adhered. It will have a, a kind of a funny shadow. So now after I've got the interfacing on, I'm going to go ahead and put my fusible fleece on the back of this piece as well. So again, rough side or bubbles up. Lay my piece of fabric right on top. Lining up the edges. All right, and give it a nice press here all the way across, 12 seconds, wiggle, wiggle. Get that all ironed on. So we're set to go. You may see my cute little bracelet. So, oh, thanks, Pat. So this little bracelet, we sell these at the store. We have them in three different colors. So we have them in white, blue, like an aqua blue, and then a black. And the black one is really wide. We have these cute little measuring tape bracelets at Nana's. And all the fabrics I'm using tonight are available at Nana's as well. Okay, so that's the back of our bag. So now we have four pieces ready to go. Let's talk about it. We have the back of our bag. We have the gathered front of our bag. We have our lining piece that has our card slots in it. And then we have this long lining piece with nothing. Okay, so those are our pieces. Those are set to go. We're going to come back to those in just a second. But now the last thing we need to do before we start putting this bag together is we need to do our zipper. Okay, so I'm going to grab my zipper out and I'm going to grab my zipper binding. So this is where I'm, I'm burging up, I'm um, straying away from the tutorial. So you have that piece that's one and a half by two and a half. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little binding for our zipper. So we're going to fold this in half, a hot dog fold. Fold it in half, wrong sides together. Okay, and I apologize, my family's being a little noisy upstairs. It's been a while since we did a video at home, so I think they kind of forgot the, the routine. Okay, after we do that, we fold it in half, wrong sides together. Now we're gonna fold each one of the sides into the center and press. Okay, so I fold it into the center and press, right here. And the other side, into the center and press. All right, on both sides. All right. So I'm gonna press this on both sides. 
Okay, so now it's pressed in there. So I've got the, the edges folded into the center, and this is my little zipper binding, okay? Set right here. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our zipper to the right size. So right here, I'm gonna change out my zipper pull. I'm kind of known for this, I love to do it all the time, so I wanna demo that really quick for you right here. So here's my zipper. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut off the metal end of my zipper. Now I'm not using my good sewing scissors. These are what I like to officially call my junk scissors, okay? They used to be my good scissors, but they aren't anymore. They've got, you know, they've gotten kind of dull over time. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that little metal piece off and throw it in the trash. Then I'm gonna pull my zipper pull completely off. So there is my zipper right there. I'm gonna grab out a new colored pull out of my little box here. I keep my pulls inside my little trough here. I'm gonna find a color that goes well with my project. So I've got a beautiful pink that matches really nice right there. So I'm, you can't even see it in the camera because it's blending with the fabric so well. Okay, so here I'm gonna put this nice pink one on here with the cream zipper. So I've cut that metal piece off, taken the pull off. I took the cream pull off of my zipper. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the teeth, not the tape, but just the teeth on my zipper, okay? So I cut out about four or five of the teeth, right? I'm gonna set that side back down. I'm gonna pick up my zipper pull and I'm gonna hold it with the large part to the top. So just like when I put my coat on in the morning and I'm gonna stick the side I didn't cut inside the right hand side pull it down and leave out just a little bit out of the bottom, about a quarter of an inch or the same amount of teeth you cut out, that's what you leave sticking out, okay? Now I'm gonna feed the side I cut out into this left side and when you pull it down, you'll feel it click or grab. Then I'm gonna reach across, hold onto both sides of the tape with my thumb and pull up, okay? Now I put a new pull on that's fun and pink and it makes my bag unique. Oh look, I rhymed. All right, so now I'm just gonna cut off that bottom part where the teeth are missing and make a nice flat edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my zipper binding that I made. And I'm gonna slide this in right here. And I'm gonna sew with my machine about an eighth of an inch down. I don't wanna go so close to the fold that I miss it on the back side. So I wanna sew about an eighth of an inch down on here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set this on here. Now, sometimes I have to change. I have my quarter inch foot on here. Sometimes I actually have to change over to my general pressing foot, but we'll see if it behaves today. Now, again, this is different than how she did it on the tutorial. This is how we do most of our zipper backs. So this is how I'm choosing to do mine today with you guys. Oops, I pressed the back button a little too early. Okay, so I went ahead and just sewed across. Correct snips here my thread both sides and the first thing I want to check after I cut my threads is I want to make sure that on the back side I caught the binding on the back side I want to make sure it caught it and it did okay so there's my zipper binding I'm going to trim it off even on both sides okay there's my little zipper binding on there okay now I have enough to do the other side but what I need to do is I need to cut this a specific length. Length. So my bag length is nine inches. So I'm gonna cut this one inch shorter. So if this is nine, I'm gonna cut this eight from the edge of this, the binding. You will see why. This is gonna make a nice edge on our bag. So we're gonna take our zipper right here and put it on top of our ruler. This is how I like to cut mine, so one of my tricks. So I line up the edge and I use a wonder clip to hold it in place. Then I know I need to go down eight inches. So then I'm gonna pull my zipper pull up above the eight, use my hand and kind of hold this here on the thing. Now on the pattern, she says eight and a half. No, no, eight, okay? We're doing it a different way. So you might wanna make a note of that. So eight inches down, I'm gonna put this under here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut off my zipper at eight inches. Okay, now I have an extra pull here, right? I have extra zipper tape. I can make another little zipper here and use it on another project, okay? But now what I need to do is I need to bind off this extra side of my zipper. 
So I'm gonna go ahead now, and I've got that ready to go. I'm gonna pull my zipper down, my zipper pull down a little bit, and it'll be easier to work with. If I keep it close here, it wants to pull this apart. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this inside, inside my binding. So you see how it's tucked in there, in between the layers, okay? <clears throat> and I wanna make sure that zipper tape stays together as best I can. I can put a clip on it, I can put a pin on it, whatever works best to hold it in place. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna sew across. I'm gonna get my thread underneath my presser foot so it behaves. Okay, all the way across. Back tight right there. Okay, and I sew that. I check my back side, it's good to go. So I'm gonna trim all my threads off now. And I'm going to trim this off even on both sides, just like this, and we're set to go. All right, put away my threads, and there's our zipper with our cute little pink pull. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? All right, so we've got the, goodness, I pushed it up too far and it caught the edge. Okay, so that's on now. So now we have our exteriors and our lining, we're ready to go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to attach this on here. Now, I like to do mine, again, a little different than how she does it in her pattern. Um, this is just my personal preference. So I'm gonna take my piece right here. I'm gonna open my zipper just a little ways because it's easier to put on here. And I'm gonna center this on the top. So I need to look at my fabric, my, my fabric's direction. I need to make sure I've got it going the right way, okay, for my piece. So I think this is how the books are supposed to open, so I'm gonna go with it. And I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna center it on the top piece in between the edges. So I'll go ahead and center it, both sides. In here, apologize, I can hear somebody being pretty noisy up there. All right, so after I have that clipped on, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna switch over to my zipper foot. Now what I like to do when I do zippers is I like to baste it on first then I'll lay my other fabric on top and do my really good stitch. The reason why I do this is I want a straight zipper in my project. I don't want it wiggly. A lot of designers just tell you to sandwich the zipper in between the lining and the exterior. And I find when I do that, I don't always get my zipper on straight. So now there is other people that like to put a little piece of temporary um, adhesive, like a little tape, two-sided tape in here and do it that way. I've seen it that way too. That's another great way. This is just how I've learned to do it and I get the most success. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I've got it centered. Now you can kind of see there's a little line on the zipper. I don't know if you can see that little line that's on there. But my goal is to sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So in between the edge and that little line is where I wanna go because that line is a quarter inch in and that's where my zipper foot's really gonna sew in a few moments when I do the actual sewing it in but right now we're just gonna baste it. I'm not gonna change my stitch length. I'm gonna leave it at uh, my standard piecing one, which is 2.0. I'm not gonna go to a base stitch, but I call it basting because I'm just sewing this in right on the edge just to keep it secure in place. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. And what I do is, if you see my, my zipper foot is only halfway on the zipper tape, that also keeps my head over. I'm gonna move my needle over. So on my zipper foot, there's a little C, a backward C. I'm gonna move my needles right here right now. I'm gonna move it into the C, okay? So there's a C on there. I'm gonna move my needle into the C on my foot, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move my needle over because I want it inside the C. Which on my machine, it actually happens to be where I would normally set it for a quarter inch, that needle position. So at my machine on a Janome that I'm sewing on, I have it at 4.1 for needle position, and then I have it at 2.2 for stitch length. Okay? So that's what I'm doing. All right? Now, you may need a stiletto or something to hold it. So I'm gonna use my seam ripper right here to hold for me as I'm going through. And again, I'm just sewing close to the edge without falling off. I also am gonna set my machine to stop with the needle down so that when I get to the um, zipper pull, I can stop with the needle down 
and move my zipper pull out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way down. Again, just sewing close to the edge, not falling off, all the way down. All right, just move my clips out of the way. Use my seam ripper here to hold it so I don't accidentally, you know, get my finger or anything, but also holds it nice and securely. So now I have that sewn down, what I call a baste. You can see, you're gonna use both, Kathy. So the first thing, Kathy, you're gonna put on the back is the piece of interfacing on the back side of your fabric. Then you're gonna put a piece of fusible fleece on top of that. So on the back of the exterior pieces, they'll first have a piece of interfacing, then a piece of fusible fleece. Both of them on one side, okay? So both interfacing and fusible fleece on this one, interfacing and fusible fleece on this one, all right? And remember, Kathy, you can go back after the video posts and you can rewatch it and pause it and be able to catch anything you may have missed. And I do monitor the comments even after the video um, is posted. Okay, so now I've done that little base stitch. So you can see right here, I didn't do it perfectly straight. But the nice thing is because this is just the temp hold, the next line of stitching is gonna be past it and you won't ever know that that wasn't perfectly straight. Okay, so now I've got that zipper, kind of what I call basted on. I'm gonna take one of my lining pieces and I'm going to lay it on here against this pretty to pretty. Okay, so there's my front piece of my bag and here is the lining piece that does not have a pocket on it, okay? I know I've got that other piece sitting over there. I haven't forgot about it. So the lining piece with nothing sewn on it is gonna go pretty to pretty on top of the front of my bag. Now I'm just gonna line up the edges and put my clips on, holding everything in place, okay? Line up on both sides, put my clips. Clips in between. And I pull my zipper pull back a little way so it's out of my way here. All right. All right, so now when I go back and sew with my zipper foot, I'm gonna line up my edge of my zipper foot on the edge of my fabric. And that's gonna put that line of stitching right next to those teeth, but not too close. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line it up there. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew on. Sometimes it wants to be a stinker like right now. It's having a hard time coming onto the bump where it bumps up onto that zipper binding. So I kind of have to help a little bit. Again, I'm gonna use my back of my seam ripper to help me push this through. I'm gonna change my angle here for you guys a little bit and see if this changes a little bit. Make a better angle for you, maybe. So my hand isn't as much in the way. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way down, keeping the edge of my zipper foot lined up with the edge of my fabric and see in the pattern she just had you go straight to this step just put the zipper in between sandwich it sew it but I find that that zipper likes to move now I'm up to my my uh, zipper pull so I'm gonna stop with my needle down lift my presser foot and get that zipper pull out of the way okay again using my seam ripper here to help me Kind of guide the fabric through. Come off the edge, give a little back tuck. And we're set to go there. Okay. All right. Anytime, Kathy. Glad to help. Okay, so now that we have that sewn, before we do anything else, we're going to make sure our zipper works. Okay. Now, the fabric sometimes likes to get stuck up in the zipper area but it's fine, I make sure it works, it works. So now I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna iron this. Now another tip I like to do is when I go to iron it, I'm gonna use my clips and I'm gonna line up this lining and the exterior, put a clip on it to hold it down because I don't want it to creep up on me in the next step. So I'm gonna use this to kind of help hold it down out of the way. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the iron, I'm gonna iron this down all the way across. 
So these nice um, YKK zippers we carry at Nana's, I, my iron can touch them and it's not gonna melt my zipper. Now if I left it on there, it would melt my zipper. But just going right over it while I'm doing this part, it's not gonna melt it, okay? Now, only thing that is the caveat to that is if you have one of those really old, old GE irons that is like super duper heavy, those things are so hot. Those might melt it. Okay, so I've, I've ironed it on the front side, just pushing it away from the teeth. Now we do the same thing on the back side, just give it a quick iron here on the back, pushing it away from the teeth. Okay, all the way across. I'm also gonna pull my zipper out of the way over here so I can get a good iron on this. Don't be afraid to pull that zipper tape a little bit. Pull it up out of the way. Okay, so now that I have that um, ironed all the way, I'm gonna switch feet from my zipper foot and I'm gonna top stitch, okay? Now, here's one thing I like to do when I top stitch. It's kind of crazy. I actually like to use my quarter inch foot when I'm top stitching with a zipper, and I will show you why. So my machine's already got it. My foot, when I sewed it, it's really close. It's about an eighth of an inch away from the zipper. I just want to go an eighth inch of the fabric. So one eighth plus one eighth is a quarter. So I'm gonna put the edge of my quarter inch foot right at the edge of my zipper, and that will give me a perfect one eighth inch line all the way across, okay? Now I'm gonna adjust my stitch length for a top stitch. So I'm gonna take it out to either 2.2 or 2.5. Get a nice top stitch here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew. Again, I've got the edge of my quarter inch presser foot on the edge of my teeth, which is gonna make my sewing line be 1 8 of an inch from the edge of the fabric. So let's go all the way across. Again, I'll make my machine stop the needle down so that way, when I get up close to the zipper pull, I can pull the zipper pull out of the way without the fabric moving. So just going to go all the way across, right here. Little back tack, set to go. All right. So there's our piece. We've done the first set of top stitching here. This runs away. So see, that's just a nice little row of top stitching right across there holding everything down. Zipper's still working. I like to check it every so often. I just don't have a problem. But see, by keeping those clips there, that kept the fabric down so it didn't creep up and get into that zipper area and cause me a problem with my zipper not being able to move. Okay, so there's the first part of our bag. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the other side of the zipper on, the fabric onto the zipper. So. This part now, I'm gonna have my bag laying here with the pretty side up that I've already added the zipper to. I'm gonna take the other pretty side here, make sure my directional fabric's going the right way, and I'm gonna put it pretty to pretty, okay? I make the exteriors kiss, okay? So we're gonna put these pretty to pretty. But here's the difference, I apologize again. Um, we're going to have the um, zipper edge lined up at the top of the fabric. Okay, you see that there? We're having that top edge of the zipper lined up with the edge of the fabric, and our sides are nice and lined up as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my clips on, right here and right here. So we're gonna put our clips, all right, all the way across. So we're clipping it all the way. All right, and now I'm gonna sew Again, just like I did before. Get my stitch the right stitch. I'm gonna put my zipper foot on. I was in my top stitching mode, so I had to turn it back down to 2.0. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do that little base stitch. So remember, that's where I sew between this little uh, line on the zipper and the edge of the fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that. It's kind of like I'm running, oops, caught my nail. It's kind of like I'm running it right through the center of that zipper foot. Okay, stop with my needle down and get that zipper pull out of the way. Still keeping that edge lined up just where I want it. Right there, all the way across. Don't be afraid to use that seam ripper. 
keep things where you want it as you go. I don't go so far that I hit it though with my needle, that would be bad. So all the way across, a little back tack at the end, and we're set to go. Okay, again, I'm gonna trim my threads, because you know I don't like those little pesky threads there. So I've got that little base stitch all the way across. There's a little tuck right there, but you won't even know it later on. It'll pop right out. Move my zipper pull out of the way. Okay, so now I've got that other exterior piece on, right? Now I'm gonna take my lining piece that has the credit, the card pocket on it, and I'm gonna put it pretty to pretty. So we have the lining, the exterior's kissing. This side we're gonna have the lining's kissing. Okay, gonna line up that top raw edge of the fabric with the top raw edge of the zipper where I just put on. I'm gonna use my clips to hold it in place all the way across. Put my clips on. I put a couple more clips in the middle just to hold everything. I'm glad everyone is uh, following along with us on our bag tonight. If you like this kind of learning, we have other classes available on our website called Pajama Sewing, where you buy a kit at the store and you sew along with us. You can participate even if you're not in town because it's in a Facebook format and we ship the kits to you. So we have those coming up as well. Other ones this month, we're doing a pillow next week. Next Tuesday, I believe it is. We're doing a really fun pillow made from a panel. Pictures of that are on our website, nanasquiltcottage.com. Okay, again, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna be sewing the sandwich. It's got the pieces in between. I'm going to the edge of my zipper foot this time and sewing across. It's gotta jump onto that hump and it does not like that little hump of the um, binding on my zipper sometimes. It likes to be pesky. So if I get it to go, it's gonna be a stinker. Let's go. There it goes. All right. So going across. I just pull off my clips as I get to them. All the way across. Now I have my zipper pull right here, so I'm going to go ahead and stop, needle down, move that zipper pull out of the way. I'm going to press your foot. Okay. And then I'm just going to keep going across. Okay, I'm using my seam ripper to help me through the process. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we are really close to being done with this. I'm excited to, ship, to have this bag done with you. All right. And we'll have another fun project um, next month and in December as well. There's a lot of fun classes coming up at Nano, so be sure to check our website for those. Okay, I've got the zipper foot. I'm going to take it off and I'm put my quarter inch foot back on because our next step is to top stitch this after we press it. So go ahead and put that top, that um, quarter inch foot back on. The clips out of the way. All right, so same as we did before, we're going to go ahead and push that, that fabric. We're going to test our zipper. Make sure it works. No problem. It works fine. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm Got it, here's my exterior, here's my lining. I'm gonna take my clips and hold this lining down to the edge of the exterior so that way it stays out of the way while I iron and while I top stitch. So put on both sides, just give it, put the clips there to hold it in place. You can all clips, use pins, that's fine. I just really like to use my wonder clips. They do really well and quick. Okay. Now I'm just going to go over the iron. Again, I'm going to pressing away from the zipper tape on here. Get this pressed really well on both sides away from the zipper tape. Okay, now I like to open my zipper up a little bit and press a little more. My iron doesn't like to go over that zipper tape, which is, makes sense, but it wouldn't want to do that. Just a quick press here, and then we're going to go over and top stitch. The same way I did before, I like to use that quarter inch part on my presser foot to do my measurements. Okay, so 
Go ahead and just start off there. Oops, I got to change my stitch length back to 2.5. Okay. So I'm just going to go all the way across. I get close to that zipper pull. I'm going to stop the needle down. Pull that zipper pull out of the way. Maybe. Come on, baby. Oh, it's been a stinker. Watch me fight with it for a second. Oh, come on. I see my needle's in there, so I can kind of just move it all around until I get it out of the way. Okay, out of the way. There we go. Keep on going all the way down. Resting that edge of that presser foot against the edge of the zipper. All the way down. And a little back tack. And we're set. All right. All right. So now I've got that top stitch on both sides there. You can see that nice little top stitching there. See it from the inside as well, a little top stitching. Take my clips off. Now we're gonna add in that divider pocket before we do the last step. So what we're gonna do is that lining that has nothing on it, we're gonna set it over here. We're gonna take our, li our lining pocket right here. This is our divider, excuse me, our divider. I'm putting it just on top of the lining matching up the raw edges all the way around, right? Putting in a couple pins in it, here and here, and again, here and here, just to hold it in place, okay? So that's that piece of that divider. So now I'm gonna put my lining pieces back pretty to pretty. So now what we're doing is we've got our lining pieces pretty to pretty and our exteriors pretty to pretty, okay? What I'm going to do first is I'm going to line up these corners right here and put a clip on it. Okay? Then I'm going to line up the next corner. These are my exterior corners. And I'm going to put a clip on it. Okay? Next corners. Clip. I'm just going to go around with our clips. Okay? Now, whichever way I pushed this seam right here, which mine pushed toward the lining, I'm going to, oops, that just broke. I wonder if it broke. That doesn't happen very often. It's like my second one in like five years it's broken. Okay, so I'll put that clip back on. So whichever way that seam is pressed, I'm gonna make sure I do it the same way on the other side. Mine are tending to go toward the lining. So I'm gonna put those on. So I have the fabric, the piece pushed, that seam is pushed toward the lining and they're matched up. That's key too, I want them matched up. I'm gonna check it one more time, make sure nothing slipped. Now. Here, I want to make sure all these pieces stay laying flat, and I'm going to do the same thing. But I've got pins here, so I'm just going to put the pins through. Now, my little divider piece is sticking out a little bit. That is okay. It's just a smidge longer, and that is okay that it's sticking out. So again, lining up my corners here. I apologize. My family is being noisy tonight. I am so sorry. They won't be noisy next Tuesday. I'll make other plans for them. All right, so I got the sides pinned up. Now, here's where we're gonna leave a hole to turn this. This is the lining here. So my rule of thumb, people will say four inches or three inches or six, whatever. My rule of thumb is my hand's what's gotta turn it. So I'm gonna use my hand as the measuring piece, right? So I'm gonna take my hand, put my fingers here, this is the lining, and I'm gonna take my friction marker and put a line on both sides. Okay, so I'm gonna mark it and mark it right here on both sides. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my pins in here so I can mark it right there. And you can see the little lines, I think through all the layers. So what we're gonna do is that's the space I'm gonna use to turn it because my hand's what's gotta turn it. Now, one other thing I need to check before we sew is make sure my zipper is open. I'm 90% sure it is, but I'm gonna make sure my zipper's open. Can you see it in there? It's open. Okay, wanna make sure our zipper's open for this next step. Because if you don't make sure it's open, you will be sad. Because we'll have to work at it to get it to open up. Okay, so I'm gonna put a clip on here. Okay, so we're at the last step right here. We've got it all clipped, lining to lining, pretty to pretty, exterior to exterior. We're gonna start sewing at this bottom little mark we made. I'm sorry, at this one. And then we're gonna go all the way around and stop again at this one we at this side. Now one thing I like to do is one of two things. I either put a red pin here 
or I put two pins. When I put two pins or a red tipped pin, I have my red tipped pin right here. I put that there and that says, hey, stop. That reminds me to stop because I don't want to sew it all the way close because then I got to pull it out, right? So we're here at the lining. What we're going to do, oh, I've got a red here on this side too. We're going to start right here and we're going to sew onto the fabric, pivot, and go around. So this is called the jilly tip. So we're going to sew on a quarter inch, pivot, and sew around. What that does is when we turn this right side out, that lining will naturally go inside the back is how it's going to work. So, all right, give me just about three seconds. I got to grab something really quick before I sew that. Excuse me for being off camera for a second. Alright, okay, coming back. Sorry, I had to grab something. Apologize. Alright, so what we're gonna do is gonna sew on and start going around. Alright, so I'm gonna start and I'm gonna sew onto the fabric. I'm gonna get back down my 2.2 or 2.0. Okay, back tack, quarter inch on, stop the needle down, pivot and start sewing around, all right? When I get close to the edge, we're going to turn, um, we're gonna stop the needle down a quarter inch out. Needle down, pivot, turn, and keep going, okay? All the way around. Now this bag is simple because there's no box corners. Sometimes we have box corners on bags, but this one has no box corners. It's just gonna have a, a square edge. Um, now one thing too, remember we bound that zipper? So when we come up here and we sew over this bump, we wanna make sure that needle does not touch that binding on that zipper. That's gonna give us a clean edge. I can feel my binding, it's over here a half inch away. I should not hit it since I'm doing a quarter inch. But I just wanna remind you, watch out for it, don't hit it, okay? All right, so there we go. All the way. I get a quarter inch from the edge, I'm gonna stop, needle down, pivot, and keep going. Just gonna keep sewing around, all the way around my back. Thank you all for watching tonight. You know, we'll have another one of these free videos next month but this one will remain pinned at the top of the page. If you click the video tab at the top of the page, you can also see many other videos of quick little projects we have um, on here of fun things to make. Now, when you first click the videos tab, it's gonna, they're all gonna say untitled. But if you touch one of the videos, choose one of them, then when you scroll down, they'll all have names, okay? So obviously what's in the box are fabric opening box, you know, when we open the box of fabric at the store, but all the other videos are little, quick, fun projects. There's quilts, table runners, pillows, bags, other little cute little home deck gifty items. So be sure to check out our videos for other fun things to make. And we make new ones every month. All right, so when I get to the corner, I stop with my needle down, boop, quarter inch from the edge, pivot, now I'm coming back and I've got those two pins. So that two pins reminds me, hey, don't sew past here. It's my reminder. So when I get up to those pins, I'm gonna stop with my needle in that little line, pivot and sew off the fabric. All right. So there we go. Now we're gonna about ready to make the magic happen and see what we did. Okay. So now before we turn it, we are going to trim and reduce the bulk in these corners. Now I know a lot of people just like to clip the corner off, but that's not my preferred method because there's still a lot of bulk. I like to reduce the bulk by kind of going in the shape of a banana, like a little arc coming out on both sides. So I like to reduce the bulk in there like that, okay? I'm still staying at least an eighth of an inch away from my edge. That one I got a little closer than I should have. That was like a 16th. But I'll be careful when I turn it. OK. 
okay? So I'm just turning, I'm just trimming those down and reducing the bulk on all those. Making some confetti over here, guys. All right, making some confetti. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna get these pieces and throw them in the trash. All right, so now that I've trimmed, reduced the bulk, now I'm gonna stick my fingers in here and I'm gonna go between the brown pieces. So those are the, the little credit card holder. You see that little thing there? And there's the other side that's the divider. I'm gonna go between those, okay, when I go to turn this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go grab out the other corner, push it through my hole here. And just gently work my piece out. Be gentle with it. You left the opening that fits your hand, so it shouldn't be too hard to get it out. All the way. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right. So now what I like to grab is my point-to-point -point turner from Clover. I love this tool, it's one of my favorite tools. This is what I'm gonna use now to go in here and push out my corners. Okay, so I'm gonna stick it inside the hole that I just turned through and kind of work my piece up in here and get this turned out and poke my corners out gently with this. Okay, that's gonna help me get those nice corners that I want. So I'm push it on both sides gently, don't be rough with it. I have pushed it through my fabric before. It does have a blunter tip, so that's nice, but you still can push it through. Now on the corners, because I didn't hit that binding, that, that corner will push up real nice. I just stick my finger underneath it and kind of push it up. There we go. Okay, now we need to sew closed that hole in the bottom of our piece here. So what I'm gonna do is pop this out real quick, poke my fingers in here, poke it out, on both sides. Now because we did that little sew off, you see how it naturally wants to turn in? When I put my fingers in it, you see how it just kind of goes inside? So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of push it in and I'm going to go over here to my iron and I'm going to give it a quick little press and then you can hand stitch that shut if you want to, but I am going to machine stitch mine shut and finish off my bag right here. I'm going to make sure that lining did not poke up inside here too because I don't want that to not get caught. Okay, and I'm just gonna stitch across the opening. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, just across the opening. You could do the whole thing, but that would kind of make it not lay as nice, so I just do that little opening. And honestly, I have, have all the bags I've made, I've never had somebody look in there and go, oh my gosh, do you see that line of stitching on the bottom? Oh no, they don't care. They're like, oh my gosh, you made me a bag? I am so excited, thank you so much, right? Okay, so now that I got that, I caught my thread there, so I'll have to trim that out. I'm just gonna trim that thread off and make sure it caught it on both sides, and it did. So I'm happy with that, because that was important to get it caught on both sides. Okay, get rid of the extra thread. Now I'm just gonna tuck this down inside, push those corners out. Glad to have each one of you watching tonight with us. Again, if you missed the start of the video, at the very top is in the comments, you can find that what you need to cut out, a link to tutorial, but also you can watch this video over and over for the next few days. It'll be on our page indefinitely. Okay, so now inside my back, I have my card holders, I have my divider, and I have things. So basically I have three sections in my bag. Main section, we have the um, section right here with the, in between the divider and the card holder, and then the card holders. So zip that baby up, and there we go. There's our gathered clutch. Hey, Kathy. So there we go. So we're all set to go. Thank you for sewing with me and making the gathered clutch tonight. Remember, you can go back and watch this video later. Later, Click out the video tab at the top of our page and see many other fun videos we've made of fun projects you can make. I wanna thank each one of you. Remember, any of these fabrics are available at our store. So have a great night, and remember, get creative at Nana's. Have a great week.